Tonight, it's all about the green flu. The internet is full of discussions over which parts are better, cast or forged. It doesn't matter if you're talking about gun parts or car parts. It seems that the overwhelming consensus is forged parts are better. Simply put, guys, cast parts are weaker because they have all these voids in them. They have no grain structure. There's no organization. It just looks all haphazard. In fact, if you were to look at this through a microscope, you would see that it's very porous and it kind of looks like a sponge. Now, why does this happen? Well, in this process, and let's take into consideration that we have the perfect mold. One side is not cooling faster than the other side. The viscosity of the steel that's being poured in here is perfect. We're talking a casting process at its highest possible quality. There are still going to be voids in there. As the steel is cooling from the outside to the inside, things called dendrites are going to form. And they look kind of like snowflakes. These look like Christmas trees, whatever. As they cool down, they're going to form grains. But the grains are not going to be in any order. Some are going to be small, some are going to be big, some are going to be coarse, some are going to be fine. And they're going to create these voids. And remember, even if we have everything perfect, it's still going to create voids. And that's why casting doesn't create a very strong product. Now, is it good for other things? Yes. But for gun parts that are under high stress, it's not the best decision. And that's where a billet comes into play. Okay, great, fantastic. Now we know we have to have something with good grain structure. Now, how do you get that liquid steel into a billet? It's pretty easy. Instead of pouring it, all they're going to do is they're going to cool off that liquid steel, slide it down the chute so that it's kind of in the shape of a rectangular tube. And as it's going down, it's going to hit these rollers called a hot roll. And the hot roller is going to squeeze that steel straight through it. It's going to line up all these grains and smash out a lot of the voids. Now, if you wanted to take that a step further, you could cold roll it, which would increase the price of the billet. And all that would do is increase the strength of the grain structure and get rid of a lot of more voids. But let's just say you want to stop at the first process. You would have a billet. And then from there, you just got to decide if you want to come in there and mill or cut out the shape that you want. Or if you want to do what Arsenal does is, once they have their billet, they kind of forge it down into the shape that they need, and then they mill it. So they do an additional strengthening process uh, when you're dealing with Arsenal. And what's good about that is, they're keeping as much of the grain flow together as possible, instead of coming in and interrupting the grain structure by cutting it out. And that's kind of the main difference that Arsenal kind of separates itself from everybody else, is they take their billet that's been forged once, and then they do their own forging process and then they mill it. All right, so what's the general advice? Well, for cast parts, if you're making something like a figurine, something that doesn't have a lot of stress going on it, I would use a cast part because you can get it to be very detailed for a very cheap price. It's very cost efficient to use casting for those types of things. Now, next up, we have the billets that are machined or milled down. You're gonna see Spikes Tactical. That's a really great example for AR-15 receivers. They got skulls, they got the airplane guy. I think they got like a Spartan helmet now. And all they're doing is they're taking the billet and they're milling out what they need. And that can get really detailed too, but it's not the strongest. What you really wanna do is just forge the heck out of whatever you're doing so that you can keep the continuous grain structure. And that's what Arsenal does. So general advice, if you can find a company like Arsenal that forges it and then mills it, I would go with them. Guys, that's the ending of the video. Hope you found it useful. If you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Chemo 365, please do. And remember, I'll catch you guys later.